In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called coin change. So we're given a coins array and uh, represents coins of different deno uh, denotations. And an integer amount represents a total amount of money. So return the fewest amount of coins that we need to make up this amount right here. And uh, if that amount of money cannot be made, or there's no combination that can make up this amount using the coins that we have, then we're just going to return negative one. And uh, we might assume that you have an infinite number of each kind of coins. So in this case, if I have one, two, three, and the amount is zero, uh, 11, so there, there's going to be three, uh, the minimum amount of coins that we make up this amount is going to be three because we have five plus five plus one. We can definitely do one plus one plus one all the way to, uh, all the way to the, get the sum that's equal to 11, but this will give us uh, 11 coins. But the goal is we want to find the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount. And if I have two, right, if I take two plus two plus two, that, that means we need five two coins and one one coin to make up 11. So this will give us six coins, right? So we want the fewest amount of coins. And therefore, we have the shortest path, which is going to be three, right? We need three coins. And uh, if we have a situation where we cannot be able to make up this amount, then we're just going to return negative one because we cannot have two plus two to equal to three, right? It, it doesn't matter how many twos you need, we cannot be able to get to an amount of three. And if we have just one coin and the amount is zero, that means we cannot be able to make it, right? Because if the amount is zero, then there is no coins that we can make to make up this amount. If I only have one coin and I have a one amount, then I just need one coin and this will make up the amount. If I need, if the amount is two and I only have one coin, then I probably need two of those to make up this amount. So it sounds pretty uh, 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 reasonable, right? So you can see here we have a couple constraints here. So we know that the array of coins will never reach to empty. Like if there's no way that we have empty coins, uh, coins array, right? And we also know that for each coin, it's always going to be bigger than one. And for each amount that we're given, right, for the for the current amount that we're given, it's always going to be bigger than or equal to zero. It's, there's not going to be a negative value. So how can we solve this problem? So what we're going to do is we're going to use dynamic programming. We're going to talk about the uh, the top down approach first, and then we're going to talk about the bottom up approach. Um, for this problem, this is a dynamic programming problem because we cannot do it in a greedy way. Right, greedy way we take the 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 coin that's uh, largest but closest to the to the amount. But in this case, we can't because there could be a situation where all path could be a valid path. Right. So what we're gonna do is let's say we have uh, array one and two. Right. And then in this case, the amount that we want to make up is two. Right. So we want to make up amount two. So in this case, we have two decisions. And uh, in this case, if I take the first coin, this will give us one, right? We have amount one left, right? If I take the first coin, if I take the second coin, then I have amount, then I have amount zero left, right? In this case, I have amount zero. If I, then in this case, I still have one left, right? If in this case, I, the amount is one, I still have amount one left. So in this case, I have to, make two decisions it is i i can take the first coin and i can also go down to take the second coin right so in this case if i take the first coin then in this case this will give us amount zero right if i take the second coin this will give us the amount of negative value you can see that if we have a negative value what does it mean it means that we cannot be able to make up any accommodation and we can just return negative value right if we have a situation where the current amount is negative value Right? It doesn't matter negative two or negative 200 or anything. If it's a negative value, we're going to return negative one because we cannot find a path, right? So if this is a negative value, we're just going to say that this is we cannot find a path. So we can just um, ignore this path, right? In this case, we can just, because this is not a valid. So in this case, it makes sense here because it takes two coins, right, to get to this for this path is going to take two coins, right? Uh, because we take one, the first coin, as well as the, another first coin. This will give us two coins to make up this amount. And this path, you can see, we, it only takes just one coin to make up this amount. And in, in this case, the minimum amount of coins that we need is just one. 
to make up this amount, which is just a two, right? So let's say we have another example where we have one, two, right? And the amount that we wanna make up is three. So in this case, we have to have two decisions, right? We either take one or we take two. And then in this case, if we take the first coin, then we left with amount two. If we take the second coin, we left with amount one. And same thing here, if we take the amount, uh, the first coin, then the amount of coins that we, uh, the, the, the amount that we left with is just one, right? And if we take the second coin, the amount is just gonna be zero. So same thing here, uh, we want to find the fewest amount of coins to make up to the current amount, right? In this case, the current amount is one. So what's the fewest amount of coins to make up the current amount? In this case, we just need one to make up this amount, right? And this, in this case, we need zero amount of coins to make up this amount. Because just like the previous example that I showed you, if we have a zero, that means there's zero amount of coins that we need to make up that, that amount. So what we're gonna do is we wanna figure out what's, how many, what's, the few, uh, what's the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount, right? In this case, the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount is actually based on the fewest amount of coins to make up its children amount. We wanna find the fewest amount of coins to make up its children amount, then we can figure out how many coins that we need to make up the current amount, right? So you can see here, to make up this amount, right, we need one coin, right? So in this case, we need one coin, one coin to make up this amount. And how many amount of coins do we need to make up this amount? In this case, zero. So who has the, so who has the fewest amount of coins? So what's the fewest amount of coins to make up its children amount? Is it one or is it zero? One is bigger than zero, so zero is the smallest. So to figure out how many coins to make up this amount, we know that the fewest amount of coins to make up the children amount, which is zero, so zero plus the current coin, right? To, to, uh, in this case, because it needs one coin to make up this amount, so the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount is just gonna be one, right? We can just take the second coin, which is coin two, to make up amount two, right? So in this case, what's gonna happen going to return and tell its parent stack to say the fewest amount of coins to make up this current amount is just one and then how about this one the fewest amount of coins to make up if we have amount one is just one right so in this case we also tell its parent stack say the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount is just one okay so for the parent stack we know the fewest amount of coins to make up its children amount is just one. So what's the fewest amount of coins to make up the current amount? In this case, it takes one coin to get to this amount, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get one plus one, which is just gonna be two, which makes sense. One plus two, because we, don't, we do not have coin three, so we cannot be able to say, I just need one amount, one coin to make up three. I need two coins. In this case, logically, we just need one, a uh, coin one and coin two to make up amount three. So that's why we have one plus one is two, right? We just need two coins to make up this amount right here, right? Because you can see here, to make up this amount is is, is just one, right? We just need two coin. To make up this amount is just one, we just need one coin. So the fewest amount to make up is children amount, which is just one, right? It doesn't matter if it's amount two or amount one, their fewest amount of coins to make up their amount, is, uh, its amount is just gonna be one. And to make up this amount, we just need one more coin to, you know, to, to get to this amount. So you get an idea, right? The sub problem is that we need to figure out the fewest amount of coins to make up the current amount by figuring out its children, the, the fewest amount of uh, coins to make up, uh, the, the fewest amount of coins we need to make up its children amount. So based on that, what we can do is we can use a top-down approach. If we were to do the top-down approach, this will give us a, a exponential time complexity. So what we need to do is we need to use memoization. The amount four is called actually one and two times. So you can see we called amount four multiple times. Amount three, you can see F3 is called uh, so many times, right? So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cache this result. If we know the fewest amount of coins to make up amount three, we're gonna cache it in our array. And then if we visit that amount again, we're gonna return the pre-computed result. So this will save the complex time complexity down to a big O of 
um, s times n. s is going to be the total amount. n is going to be number of items or number of coins uh, that we have, right? Uh, because for each amount, we have three decisions. We have three paths that we have to traverse, or n number of paths that we have to traverse. So in this case, the time complexity is going to be s times n. And the space complexity, because we're going to use memoization, we're going to use a array or a table right, to cache this result. And this will give us a size of s, where s is num uh, the target amount that we're given. right? For each and every single amount, we're going to compute the uh, to, we're going to save the fewest amount of coins to make up each and every single amount from uh, from zero, right, all the way to S, right? So that's what we have here in our code. And you can see here in our code, um, I basically have a cache integer array, and uh, I save them in a global variable. The reason why I use amount plus one is because um, I'm going to have zero, right? And I'm also going to have, I'm also going to compute the fewest amount of coins we need for the current amount, right? Because the array is zero base, so that's why we have an extra space there. And then what we're going to do here, you can see we pass in the amount, and we're going to have a base case. The base case is that if our amount is zero, we're going to return zero because in this case the fewest amount of coins would make up if the amount of zero is zero, right? And if we have a negative value, we're just going to return negative one because the question is says that uh, if we cannot find it, we're just going to return negative one, right? So, and then we also here, you can see we have our cache. If we did not find that value, right? Or sorry, if we computed that value, then we're going to return the pre-computed value. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a DFS for all the coins, for all the path, for all the options that we have, right? For each and every single coins, we're going to do a DFS and find the fewest amount of coins that make up this current, this new amount, which is amount minus the current coin. And then if the current coin is negative one, which means we cannot find a combination, then we're just going to ignore it. Otherwise, if the current uh, minimum coins to make up the current amount is not equal to negative one, we're going to find the minimum, right? Is either the current minimum uh, or the minimum coins to make up the new amount or the child amount, or is going to be the current minimum coins, uh, current minimum coins change that we have seen so far, right? And at the end, you can see we have two situations. One situation is that we have the minimum coins change did not change because we initially set this to an arbitrary value. So if this is the same, that means that we did not find any combination at all. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set it to negative one because we just say that, okay, because we cannot find a path, right? We're just going to set it to negative one. And if we did find a path, then we're just going to get minimum coins change plus equal to one because it takes one coin to get to the current amount, right? Uh, in this case, what we're going to do at the end is we're going to cache this result in our cache and then we're going to return that result uh, or this data right and this will give us a time complexity of big o of s times n right so this is the top down approach and now let's take a look at the bottom up approach and to do this using a bottom up approach we have to figure out okay so what's the minimum amount of coins to make up if we have amount zero it's zero right what if we have a amount of what if Let's say we have one and two, and the amount is three. What's the fewest amount of coins to make up if the amount is one? It's just one, right? And if if the current amount is two, what's the fewest amount of coins to make up this current amount? In this case, it's just going to be one, right? So we have zero. We have we're just going to have this is our basically our cache array. Um, it takes zero to figure out the uh to for the fewest amount for this amount. It takes one, it takes one to get to this amount. And then if we have amount three, what's the fewest amount of coins? It's gonna take one, the first coin, plus the second coin, which which give us two coins to, to get to this amount, right? So in this case, we have two coins. Then we have two options to choose. Either we take the first coin, if we take the first coin, then we have left with amount two. If we have amount two, wait a second, we know the, we know the fewest amount of coins to make up amount two, which is just going to be one. 
And if we take the second coin, then the amount is just one. So we know that the fewest amount of coins to make up amount one is one, right? This is what we have here. Um, basically, same thing, we take the coins and amount. We're gonna have a cash array. We're gonna set it to a arbitrary value, which is gonna be amount plus one. What we're gonna do is we going to, we know we're gonna set the first L value, right? To be zero, because it takes zero coins to make up amount zero, okay? And uh, you can see here, we're going to start from one all the way to amount, all the way to amount uh, to, the, uh, to the end of the array. And I is gonna be the current amount. Um, we're going to iterate number of coins, right? In this case, coins, and for each iteration, because we're going from bottom to up, right? We already compute the previous values before, then to compute the current amount of coins, to, to compute the fewest amount of coins to make up the current amount, it's going to be the children amount, right? So in this case, we check to see if the children amount is actually, or the child amount is actually bigger than or equal to zero. If it is, then what we're going to do is we're going to update the current amount. It's either the current, um, uh, the fewest amount of coins to make up the current amount that we have so far, or it's going to be the fewest amount of coins uh, that we make up the children amount plus the current coin. Just go through an example here. I think it's a lot easier. The amount that we want is let's say five, right? So in this case, what's the fewest amount of, uh, to make up if the amount is zero is zero, right? The fewest amount of the fewest amount of coins to make up one is just one. The fewest amount of coins to make up two is just one, right? Because in this case, we iterate if we if the amount is two, we iterate all three coins to figure out the smallest the the, the, the smallest uh, amount of coins, right? In this case, it's just going to be one, right? And then if we have amount is three, right? If we have amount is three, then in just in this case, we just need three right or sorry just one in this case the coin three will give will give it away if the amount is four then we're going to iterate all four all three options just like how we do it originally right we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get okay so if the amount is four then four minus the current coin which is one will give us amount of three but you can see here we already have three computed this is zero this is one this is two this is three right so three has the fewest amount of coins to make up this amount is one. So in this case, it's gonna be one plus one, right? Three plus a coin three plus a coin one will give us amount of two, right? So in this case, it takes two coins to make up. And then we also have the try with two. So four minus two will give us a amount of two. And two, we already computed before, is gonna be one. So one plus uh, the current uh, the current coin, which is just going to be one, right? Which is going to be one, and it's just going to give us two. And we also can try with th uh, three, right? So four minus three will give us uh, one, right? So one, in this case, we know we already computed that before. The amount of one, it, it takes one coin to make up that amount. So it's going to be one plus one, which is also two. So at the end, you can see that four has a fewest amount of coins to make up that amount. It's just going to be two. And then same thing for five, right? So you get an idea. So the time complexity here is gonna be big O of S times N. S is gonna be amount, right? Because you can see here, uh, we're iterating from one all the way to amount. And for each iteration, we're gonna iterate all the coins. That's all our options, right? So that's gonna give us S times N for the time complexity. And for space complexity is actually gonna be big O of S as well. Right, because we here you can see we have a cache array that has a size of s, and we're going to for each iteration we're going to compute each and every single amount of its fewest amount of coins that we need to make up that each and every single amount in our cache array. So there you have it, and thank you for watching.